Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. If you've clicked on this video, it's most likely because you're about to play the next entry in the God of War series. It may have been quite a while since you last played a God of War title and the story may be a bit hazy, so I thought now is a great time to get up to date on everything Kratos has been up to through his gore-filled life. So if you're ready, let's do this. Let's pick up the story when Zeus, the king of the gods, learns of a prophecy which will see him killed by a mere mortal man. The prophecy also describes the distinctive markings his murderer possesses. In fear of this marked warrior, Zeus informs his eldest children Ares and Athena, who also happen to be the god and goddess of war, and tasks them with tracking down and ending this potential threat. Whilst pillaging and destroying the land, Ares discovers a small Spartan boy with extremely distinctive birthmarks and attempts to capture him. That boy is not Kratos, it's his younger brother Deimos. Kratos tries his utmost to protect his brother, but he's no match for the god of war Ares and is bitch slapped into submission. Luckily for Kratos, Athena persuades her brother to leave Kratos alive because not only is she the goddess of warfare, but she's the goddess of wisdom too. So her brother agrees and Kratos is forced to watch on as his brother is taken away. Fueled by his failure to protect his younger brother, Kratos honours Deimos through a full body tattoo mimicking his brother's birthmarks. Over time, Kratos became a member of the Spartan army, hoping to one day avenge his little bro. His rage and lack of mercy saw him ascend the Spartan ranks. Eventually, he married Lysandra and the two had a daughter named Calliope. He finally became a Spartan captain after recovering a mysterious healing element known as Ambrosia in a painstaking battle with Ulrich and the Barbarians. He used this Ambrosia to save his daughter, who was moments away from death due to a plague ravishing the lands. Kratos and his thirst for war saw the Spartan army annihilate all opposition until the day the barbarians returned, led once again by Ulrich. The barbarian hordes easily overpowered and massacred the Spartans, and all Ulrich needed to do was kill the defeated Kratos. With his final breath, Kratos called to the god of war Ares and offered his life in return for victory. Ares! Destroy my enemies and my life! is yours. Seeing this as an opportunity to build the ultimate warrior and disciple, Ares instantly slaughters the barbarian hordes and binds Kratos to the Blades of Chaos, a constant reminder of his pledge to the god of war. Kratos continued to murder and pillage in the name of Ares and slowly lost his humanity. Only his love for his wife and daughter prevented Kratos from becoming the ultimate weapon of war Ares desired. So knowing this, Ares sent Kratos to destroy a temple created to honour Athena. The village oracle attempts to stop him, but consumed by rage and ambition, Kratos massacres all inhabitants. But the final two victims will haunt him for the rest of his life. Ares had sent Kratos' his wife and child to that temple in the hopes he would murder the only things keeping his humanity alive, and thus becoming the ultimate weapon. Kratos, now devastated, finally realised he could no longer serve Ares and vows revenge for the murder of his family. The oracle curses Kratos to wear the ashes of his murdered wife and daughter for the rest of his life, leading to his unwanted nickname, the Ghost of Sparta. Upon breaking his vow to Ares, Kratos is captured and tormented by the Furies. The Furies were effectively Oath Keepers who punished anyone who broke a vow or promise. The three Furies kept Kratos in a dreamlike state, almost wiping his memories completely. Luckily for Kratos, Orcos, who physically holds broken promises on his body in these disgusting parasite-like tumours, saw the injustice of his pledge to Ares and assists him. The Ghost of Sparta learns the only way to be freed is to kill the three Furies, which he does with surprising ease. With the job done, Orcos reveals that Kratos must kill one last person to truly free himself from the oath, Orcos himself. As he's the son of the Furies, all the oaths were transferred over to him. Kratos, slightly reluctant, does the dirty deed. The truth of the murder he committed, the slaughter of his wife and child, the carnage forged from his relentless ambition. Yes indeed, Kratos' memories fully return and once again he is ravaged by the death of his wife and child. Poor guy, just can't catch a break. 
Now fueled by a desire to remove his nightmares, Kratos meets Persephone, the queen of the underworld, who offers the ghost of Sparta a better alternative, seeing his daughter again. But that comes with a caveat, he must give up all his godlike powers, which Kratos agrees to. Kratos reunites with his daughter, but the happiness is short-lived. Persephone reveals she has unleashed Atlas, a hulking great titan who will destroy the pillar that cradles the earth, killing all mankind and the gods of Olympus. Of course, Kratos can't stand for that and gives up his life with his daughter and once again goes on the warpath against Persephone and Atlas. Due to Atlas' size, Kratos opts to chain him to the upper edges of the underworld whilst he returns to finish Persephone. As she dies, her body explodes and the resulting force destroys the pillar. Luckily, Atlas is still chained into place and now holds the world on his shoulders for the rest of time. Kratos once again commits himself to serving the gods in the hopes of having his memories removed, but after a decade of servitude, he is a little pissed off to say the least and lets the gods know. Ten years, Athena. I have faithfully served the gods for ten years. When will you relieve me of these nightmares? Athena hears his calls and proclaims that if Kratos can kill Ares, the god of war, she will take his nightmares away. Kratos is more than happy to oblige, gaining revenge and losing his visions are all he has ever wanted, so off he trots to Athens to face Ares and his army. Kratos meets the local oracle who reveals the only way to defeat a god is through a mystical item known as Pandora's Box, which so happens to be chained to another great hulking titan called Kronos. Kratos does what Kratos does and murders his way to Pandora's box, and just before he's about to open it, Ares, who feels a disturbance in the force, sorry, wrong franchise, Ares senses Kratos and hurls a pillar a few thousand miles away, impaling Kratos, almost touching distance away from the artifact he needs to kill Ares. Death is only the beginning for Kratos. After a long journey through the underworld, he gets back to Athens to finally open Pandora's box and becomes Mega Kratos, a huge version of himself and fights Ares. Ares uses powerful memories of Kratos killing his own family to gain the edge in battle, but Kratos, driven by revenge, bests him and kills the god of war. Kratos, who has now fulfilled his vow of vengeance, once again asks for his memories to be removed, but Athena is having none of it. No man, no god could ever forget the terrible deeds you have done. A broken and frankly devastated Kratos takes himself to the highest mountain in all of Greece. The ghost of Sparta throws himself to his certain death, but the gods had a greater vision for his future and ascend him to another level. You will not die this day, Kratos. From that moment on, Kratos became the new god of war. Sat on his new throne, Kratos has a vision and travels to the temple of Poseidon to seek answers. Once there, he finds his mother dying, who reveals his brother Deimos is still alive and is being held captive by Thanatos, the god of death. And with that, Kratos' mama dies. Now back in Sparta, Kratos battles his younger self and reclaims his Spartan army from the pre-God of War days. The God of War goes on yet another murder spree and locates the gateway to Death's Domain. Here we finally see Deimos, who has the sexiest beard I've seen in a long time, and once free, Deimos reveals his anger for Kratos is the only thing that kept him alive and attempts to kill his brother. During the fight between the brothers, Thanatos takes Deimos away as he wants to be the one who kills him, but just in time, Kratos arrives and saves his brother. That becomes the catalyst for the two to work together, and the brothers take down the god of death, but at the cost of Deimos' life. Kratos once again has lost his family and carries his brother to his final resting place and ponders his actions, to which the gravedigger calls Kratos Death, the destroyer of worlds. Athena appears once again and attempts to reward Kratos for his deeds. As he has no ties to the mortal world, after his daughter, wife, brother and mother are all dead, he can now become a full-fledged god. Kratos shocks everyone and turns down the offer and remarks, The gods will pay for this. With his Spartan army at his back, Kratos wages war on pretty much anyone he can to spread the glory of Sparta. The gods watching on are becoming nervous of his actions, and Athena begs Kratos to stop before he faces the wrath of the gods. 
Kratos turned his back on Athena, both physically and metaphorically, and joined his army in Rhodes. But suddenly, a portion of his powers are stolen by this mythical bird and given to the Colossus of Rhodes. The two behemoths battle on, and out of nowhere, the king of the gods, Zeus, throws down the Blades of Olympus, the most powerful weapon in existence. The only downside is that Kratos must infuse his last remaining godly powers into the weapon to defeat the Colossus of Rhodes. It worked surprisingly well, and as he defeats the Colossus, the flailing arm crushes Kratos, causing him to drop the sword. Kratos is now moments away from death, and must regain the sword to become his immortal self again. Lo and behold, the mythical bird flying around was in fact Zeus, who reveals this whole thing was a trick to kill Kratos. So Zeus shoves the sword straight through Kratos, killing him. Of course, in Greek myth, death doesn't really mean much, and as Kratos is pulled into the underworld, he is rescued by another titan, Gaia. Gaia and Kratos hatch a plot to defeat Zeus by using the Loom of Fate, which effectively is a time machine. He ventures to the island of creation and defeats countless foes and finally locates the loom and attempts to change his fate. Arriving back in time at the moment he was killed by Zeus, Kratos takes the blade of Olympus and the two fight to the death. Just as Kratos is about to land the killing blow, Athena jumps in the way and is killed by Kratos. In her last words, she reveals, Zeus is Olympus. <laughs> Meaning that if Zeus dies, Olympus will fall and all the gods will perish. But she isn't done there. No son should destroy his own father. Yeah, Kratos is the son of Zeus, who'd have thunk it. No, I have no father. Kratos is not flustered by the revelations and once again uses the Loom of Fate to build his army, filling it with titans from the past. A huge war breaks out as the titans attempt to climb Mount Olympus. A key battle is won when Gaia and Kratos defeat Poseidon, but actually flood the entire world in the process. Once atop of the mountain, Zeus lays in wait and knocks Gaia and Kratos to their death. Gaia manages to hold on, but refuses to help Kratos, revealing herself to be just as untrustworthy as those pesky gods. Now dead, again, Kratos is in the underworld for the fifth time, but this time he defeats Hades, the god of the underworld. Whilst here, Kratos learns how to defeat Zeus, and it's once again by using Pandora's box. But this time though, it's locked behind the flames of Olympus, which can only be extinguished by its namesake, Pandora. Once Pandora is located, Kratos' humanity finally kicks in again, and he sees her like a daughter he lost. When the moment arrives for Pandora to sacrifice herself to extinguish the flames of Olympus, Kratos won't allow it. Eventually she does break free, but another god stands in her way, Zeus. Father and son Zeus and Kratos fight, which is punctuated with Pandora attempting to complete her task in life. Her last ditch attempt is foiled by Kratos, who refuses to lose another daughter. But one final insult from his dad, Don't fail her like you failed your family puts things into motion which can never be undone. After waking, Kratos opens Pandora's box to reveal, well, nothing, it's, it's empty. This anticlimax is taken to the next level as Kratos and Zeus stand over the now ruined, flooded and destroyed world they have created. Face me, father. It is time to end this. Yes, my son, it is time. Remember Gaia? Well, she managed to hold on and finally reaches the summit again and attempts to kill both Zeus and Kratos. During the scuffle, both gods fall into Gaia's chest and fight next to her heart. In the final moments, Kratos kills both his father and Gaia by impaling their hearts simultaneously. Kratos has now defeated all the gods and all the titans. The Greek pantheon is no more. But wait, Zeus somehow transcended his body and his spirit form attempts to kill Kratos once again, using a mixture of fear, violence and those memories Kratos hates so much. But after 10 years of this living nightmare, Kratos is able to knock Zeus' spirit back into his body and then beats him to death in a lovely touching father-son moment. Athena arrives in her new ascended form and gives us one last revelation. Pandora's box did actually contain something. It contained evils such as fear, which enveloped the gods, but there was also an even more powerful weapon inside that box. And that was hope, which sounds ridiculous, but helped Kratos achieve his ambitions to defeat the gods of Olympus. Athena asks for hope to be returned to her so she could give it to mankind, but Kratos looking at the devastation around him, refuses her offer and does this instead. 
An angered Athena removes the sword and leaves Kratos to die his final death. The story isn't quite over yet though, as Kratos' body is no longer here and a trail of blood leads over the cliff edge. You could call it a cliffhanger ending. See what I did there? Sorry. We now know that in 2018, the God of War has moved into Norse myth in which Kratos becomes a dad again. But this time, he has a spectacular beard to protect him. Woohoo, we did it! I can't believe we got through that. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. Thank you for sticking around to the bitter end. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll see you next time.